Except for a few astronauts, we are all sitting on a planet that is spinning at about a thousand miles per hour, give or take. Once every 24 hours, we make one complete rotation. This rotation and what we perceive as a day is basically just a fluke of the Earth's formation, both helped and hindered by the presence of its moon, its distance from the sun, and plain random chance. Then why do we say there are 24 hours in a day? Why not 25 or 10? What's so special about the number 24 that we chose to divide the day into it? Well, let's find out. We have to look back to when we first started keeping track of time, which was a really long time ago. Although they may have inherited this system from the more ancient Sumerians, the Egyptians are the oldest society that we have evidence for dividing the day into 24 parts. How do we know this? From the sundials they left behind. Daytime was divided into 12 hours. 10 hours of daylight, with 2 hours for dawn and dusk, leaving 12 hours for night. But why two 12-hour periods for day and night? Most counting systems in the world are base 10. And the reason for this seems to be because we have 10 fingers, which makes it easy to count to 10. So why did the Egyptians count to 12? There are three explanations. It's actually pretty easy to count to 12 on your fingers. By using your thumb to count the number of knuckles or segments on your fingers, each hand adds up to 12, giving each person a grand total of 24 knuckles. 12 can be divided more easily than 10 without having to resort to fractions. 6, 4, 3, and 2 all divide quite nicely into 12, while 10 only has 5 and 2, or 1, but that's not very useful. There are 12 lunar cycles in the year. Maybe they based it off of that. Who knows? Funny thing about the Egyptians' clock, day and night were always an equal number of hours in length. That meant the length of an hour varied throughout the year. In the summer, a daylight hour was longer than a nighttime hour, and vice versa in winter. It wasn't until the Greeks came along that we nailed down an exact length for the hour. Greek astronomers at the time needed to make more precise calculations, and in order to do this, they needed hours of a fixed length. The simplest way to do this was to make all hours an equal length, regardless of the time of year. Each hour was divided into 60 minute segments. Why 60? because that's what the Babylonians did and the Greeks were big fans. The Sumerians probably did it that way too, way before all of them. Again, 60 seems pretty arbitrary, uh, but it does divide into 12 and 24 pretty easily, so it probably made pretty good sense at the time. Outside of astronomers, minutes weren't really recognized by regular people until centuries later when mechanical clocks became more common. From then on, we kept dividing time into 60 smaller segments. Once clocks became precise enough, we added a second minute hand to measure the intervals between minutes. These intervals were eventually called seconds. Of course, there have been attempts to modify the time system. During the French Revolution, there was a short-lived movement to change over to decimal time, where there would be 10 hours in a day and 100 minutes in each hour. This obviously never caught on, but that didn't stop people from trying. In 1998, Swatch, known mostly as a Swiss watch manufacturer, lobbied for a decimal-based time system on the internet. Their system defined a day as a thousand beats. Like their French predecessors, Swatch's system was never implemented. That doesn't mean our time system isn't being tweaked on a regular basis. In 1967, after thousands of years of relying on Earth's motion through space, we decoupled our timekeeping system from the heavens entirely. It was in that year we redefined the second as the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. Easy. And the atomic clock was born. Instead of gears or a pendulum ticking off the seconds, an atomic clock uses the regular emission of radiation to keep time. These are our most accurate clocks to date, and some will be only off by a second every 100 million years. But because of irregularities in the Earth's orbit and rotation, these clocks become out of sync with our normal solar day. To bring atomic clock time into agreement with the inconsistent rotational period of our planet, leap seconds are added every once in a while, making some minutes 61 seconds long. So there you have it, a brief history of timekeeping, where we went from counting our knuckles to counting the radiation emission of an atom. What the future will hold, only time will tell. Thank you, Matt, and it's a shame I didn't get to spill wine on your pants this video. Up next, I interview Ron Mallet, who has a theory for how to build a time machine, and he thinks it's very possible. I sure don't. <laughs> that was irony. We still have irony in the future. Apparently, you're not very funny in the future. You hurt my future feelings.